book page 36 and going through the ideas of a physical change versus a chemical change. Every time you handle matter, some sort of change occurs. Some changes are a little bit more significant than others. So a physical change is a, cha is a change that typically changes the appearance of the sample. So it changes how it looks to us visually, but it's actually the same substance. And the reason it's the same substance is because the composition the atoms that make it up, and the structure, how those atoms are linked or bonded, are not changed. So even though it may look a little bit different, it will have the same name and formula as, as it did before the change. Typically what happens is that the molecule or particle orientation changes um, in reference to each other. So let's see if I can move this up. Whoa, here we go. So I'm going to look at the particle diagram. So take a look. I start off with a particle, and these are each of the particles in the sample. And notice how I'm drawing them. And then I put them through a change. And all I do for the change is just put the sample in a slightly new uh, environment. So maybe it was in the refrigerator at home or the freezer, and I take it out and I put it on the counter. So when I put it on the counter, slowly, but because my counter is a little bit warm or is a lot warmer than the freezer or the fridge, I start to add heat, some heat from the room to my sample. And my sample had a lid or a cover on it, and I remove it. And when I do and I when I take that lid off, I actually decrease the pressure on my sample. The ending result is all of those particles. Are now like this. So each particle is still a circle. I started off with nine. I still have nine. But based on how I drew the particle diagram, my sample started off in the solid state and how I drew it after it's been placed in its new environment. It is a gas and with this little bit of adjustment in its environment by allowing heat to be added to the sample and decreasing the pressure, my sample was allowed to go through a process known as sublimation. My solid sublimed into a gas. So I'm going to move back up here. So now there are some very important keywords that we use in chemistry class that can help us identify if it's a physical change. So the first thing I want to point out that if, if our sample goes through a phase change, all phase changes are physical. So if we use words like the, it melts, boils, freeze, condense, vaporize, sublime, depose, evaporate, are all everyday words of phase changes. I want to throw in another word that also represents an idea of a phase change is if we say, hey, the substance dissolved. So if it dissolved, 
That means probably for us in class, it started off as a solid, we dumped it into water, and the little crystals disappeared from our eye view, and so now its new phase is aqueous. Other physical changes that aren't phase changes would be things like if we crushed our sample. You know, if we mix, stir, cut, chop, inflate, deflate, um, if we warm it up, or the opposite, cool down, um, cut, chop, crush, if we grind, break, uh, grind, I'm just trying to think, oh, like stretch it, if we stretch. So there's lots of words out there. That's just to get us going. So words like crush, mix, stir, cut, chop, inflate, deflate, warm up, cool down, grind, stretch, smash, those are all great words that represent physical change. We are just altering the appearance of how we see the sample. On to chemical change. So chemical change. Chemical changes are simply chemical reactions. It means that a reaction has happened. And as a result of the reaction, the composition which I'm gonna put here, the composition referring to the atom ratio, and the structure, how those atoms are bonded or linked together, of that molecule are changed. And as a result, the substance or substances present in the container, they have a new name and a new or different chemical formula because they are not the same or original substance. Physical and chemical changes, until you've had enough experience in learning how to analyze what you are viewing, can be difficult to tell the difference to. But some of the things that we look for in the lab to help us really know if a chemical change has occurred would be the formation of lots of bubbles. So like fizzing. If a precipitate forms. And the abbreviation for precipitate is PPT. Hey, if it's on fire, that's an easy one. Um, we can monitor a change in the pH value. That also can help us determine if a chemical reaction has occurred. Things like a change in color or a substance, all of a sudden, you know, we see a different phase present. Sometimes we have to have other evidences present to determine if it was really a chemical versus a physical change. So if I drop down to the bottom here to where the particle diagram is. So in my chemical change, I have, I'm starting off with particles that look like this. And when I put it through a chemical change, my atom ratio, one circle, to one square is now changed. This has no squares in it, now it's two circles. So my atom ratio, a one to one, a circle to square, no longer exists on the product side. So who the circle is bonded to has changed. It was bonded to a square, now it's bonded to another circle. And these are the other particles that are produced. So. The two particles I start with have a different ratio, composition, 
and structure compared to the particles I end with, meaning a chemical change has occurred. Keywords to represent a chemical change. Move it just a little bit more. Okay, so let's list down some important words. Hey, if it simply says the word reacts, that's an easy one. Um, combustion, which is fancy for saying, hey, we might see a fire or it burns. Um, neutralize. Decompose which means our sample breaks down, which is chemical. So in chemistry, we use breakdown differently than we do in our everyday, everyday lives. So if a sample breaks down, it means it decomposes. That's the chemistry term versus, you know, you have a cardboard box and you break it down. That's not what we're talking about. So decompose is the same as breaks down. Um, thinking about things in the kitchen. So if you cook it, fry it, bake it, those are all chemical changes versus warming a sample up. Um, if it grows, if it dies, if it rots, which might be a more term like De decomposition or it decomposes. Um, food can also sour, spoil, um, ferment. Oh, don't forget like fancy words for, or the fancy word oxidize, right? Because that's a term you guys have heard. It oxidizes which would also be the idea to bleach, rust, corrode. Are, are there more? Absolutely, but these are common ones and this will get you thinking in that. So taking a look at the practice problems down below. So the I do. So when I read the first I do, dry ice sublimes at room temperature. I really focus on this word sublimes. So either I have now memorized some of these words and what they re represent, or I'm looking at my list of words, and sublime is specifically listed as a phase change. And all phase changes are physical changes. The we do. Iron rusts in damp temperature. So I noticed this word rust, and it's one of the specific ones listed under the chemical change. So this is chemical. And then my last we do, dissolving sugar in water. So I noticed this word dissolving, and if I've been paying attention, I noticed that I wrote dissolving as an example of a phase change. And if it's a phase change, that means it is physical. You try, you do's one, two, three, and four, check your answers with the teacher.